The thing I've always wanted to have work for me is a robot butler, but I'm currently not in that position, so I'm going to have to settle for the modes. Today we're going to be going through some of the modes and talking about how you can use them in your songwriting, because I think a lot of times modes can be very confusing for people, and I think one of the reasons for that is because we really talk about them more for like lead playing and less for compositional stuff, which is how I kind of incorporate them all the time. So we're using one of the new songs that I just released the other day as an example of this, and we're gonna talk about music theory, all this stuff, right? So there's a couple different parts in this song, we're gonna get into each part, but it starts like this. So, number one, this guitar is tuned down a full step. So, I just played a C sharp minor seven to a major seven as far as the shapes of the guitar go, but in reality, this is gonna be actually lower uh, than that, right? Just because it's tuned down. So, we're just using it. We're gonna be talking about this as if it were the key of E, even though technically, sonically, it's in the key of D, just because I think the shapes make more sense, all right? So, number one, right off the bat, I just said that we were in the key of E. All right, what that means is there are seven notes in the key of E. E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp, D sharp, and E. Okay, so we've got those seven notes. Any one of those seven notes can become chords, right? If we just go major and minor, we have E major, F sharp minor, G sharp minor, A major, B major, C sharp minor, then we have uh, the D sharp diminished back to E. Okay? Now, uh, right off the bat, these are all triads. These are all three note chords. And while you can really do a lot with these, I think that the flavor of each of the modes comes out when you make them seventh chords. Okay? All that is is just adding another note to each one, the seventh note away in that key from where you started, right? So if we have an E major, now that becomes an E major seven. If we go through the same thing, it's E major seven, F sharp minor seven, G sharp minor seven, a major 7, B, dominant 7, C sharp minor 7, we have a minor 7 flat 5 on that D sharp, and then that takes us back to E major 7, okay? So real quick, we can start talking about the modes right here. I think it's the most important thing to think of, like, alright, this intro chord progression, which is just C sharp minor 7 to A major 7, is a great way to start talking about how the modes sound, okay? Now, uh, again, we're in the key of E, so thinking of it with the shapes, but we don't have an E in this intro. We have C sharp minor seven, which is the sixth chord, also known as the relative minor of a key. There's gonna be a lot of terms in here, don't worry about it, we're gonna kinda just go through everything. But yeah, we have that sixth chord, that minor seven chord, relative minor chord, to the four chord, all right? So just like I said, there, any seven notes in that key can become a chord, Every single one of those chords has its own kind of sonic signature within there, all right? So if you'll notice, I've played these two chords just in the intro to kind of set the tone for the song. And also, I'll link you to the song if you want to hear that first, because it might make more sense kind of talking about this. Otherwise, I'll just put the song at the very end of this lesson. You can skip through it if you don't even want to hear it. But, uh, you know, YOLO, why not? Put the song at the end, right? So we have a minor chord, the sixth chord in the key, this is going to be known as the Aeolian mode, or just the minor scale. You could just think of this as being a C sharp minor, because we start with a C sharp minor, but then we go to this A major 7, right? And think about how many times we stay on this. We have the C chord for 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 2, 3, 4. A goes 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so even though I start with a C sharp minor, I have two bars of C sharp minor as compared to four bars of A major seven, all right? Now again, we can still think of this as, we haven't even really totally determined that we're in the key of E just yet, but if, spoiler alert, we are. This is gonna be a six, four chord progression in that key of E, all right? Now, it's heavy on the four chord, right? It has twice as much four chord as it has six chord. So because of that, it has a certain type of sound. Now, that fourth note's sound is going to be the Lydian mode. Lydian is kind of my favorite mode. It's a mode that I write in a lot. I kind of try to, you know, I, before I even knew 
anything about the modes, I think I just naturally was inclined to play stuff that was heavy on the four chord, right? This is a great example. A lot of my stuff that I personally write has that in there, right? Now there's no one chord, we have a six to a four, and that four chord really is kind of being leaned heavy on in the chord progression, right? One, two, one, two, three, four. Now some people who maybe already know a little bit of music theory, might be like, well, how come this isn't in the key of A? Because in the key of A, right, A, B, C sharp, this, this could just be a 3-1 in the key of A. And that's a great question. And one thing I want to kind of demonstrate is just how powerful that relative minor is by starting here, C sharp minor 7, to A. If I were just to strum them and try to resolve somewhere, As soon as I get to that E, that's where like home is still. And this is a very important kind of thing to think about when using modes with songwriting is unless you want something to sound really just kind of like major or minor, you really kind of have to like do some finessing because everything wants to go home to major. Everything is always kind of like built to go there because just, you know, in Western music, our ears are just trained so severely that everything is like either made major or minor. So you kind of have to be careful about that, that pull to the home chord, or you could use it to your advantage, right? So because I'm so heavy on this four chord, I'm thinking of this being Lydian, right? A Lydian in the key of E major is one way to look at it. And again, that sounds fancy, but that's just a fancy way of saying that I'm staying on that four chord more than I want than I'm saying anywhere else. The tonal center of the song is on that chord as compared to anything else, right? And again, we haven't even talked about lead playing or the notes that go into the melody. This is really just kind of creating a vibe and an atmosphere with these two chords right off the bat. The funny thing is, this actually isn't even the verse of the song yet. The verse of the song hits you starting with an E to F sharp minor seven back to A. E major. F sharp minor seven, A. Okay? So, one way that I'm not really totally pulling the tonal center too far away, even though I'm hitting that one chord, the home chord, just like I talked about avoiding, is because number one, I'm using just the E major triad, and then the amount of time I'm staying on it relative to where my where I'm considering my tonal center is is as follows. We have one, two, three, four, again, two bars, one bar of F sharp, one, two, three, four. So I have two bars of E, one bar of the two chord, and then four bars of the four chord, the Lydian chord, right? And because of that, I think right there, that's a good example of, uh, like, how, what's the description of this chord progression? I have the one chord in there, it starts it off, the two chord, and then I have that four chord as a major seven chord. I think it still has kind of like that kind of sad sound, but not totally minor sound. That's the sound of Lydian, because I'm really just hammering home, right? Two bars, one bar, four bars. Add it up, you have seven bars. A chord progression is seven bars long. Wow, what genius writing, Sean. Thank you very much. I'll take it, all right? So, we have a one, two, four chord progression. And then that kind of gets interspersed with a... Because I didn't want to make it too repetitive. So now we have a six, three, four. Okay, I'm changing everything around there, but I'm always going to that four chord. And this is a way to kind of make the sound of Lydian kind of permeate the entirety of this song, all right? So I've got the intro that kind of starts it off in minor, just to kind of set the tone that this is not really a super happy sounding song. I'm not gonna talk too much about the picking, but I do go over all the picking of this this type, this kind of, I don't know if you wanna call it Travis style or just Red Over Finger style, in a course that is on sale right now in the description. Check that out if you haven't yet, because you can learn a lot about this kind of picking with these kind of chord voicings, right? So we have this six to four progression that kind of sets the stage for the song to be like, all right, all right, all you E major people, we're not gonna, this isn't gonna be a major thing. Yes, there's a major chord in the verse, but it's really just a way to go from a one to a two to a four, right? And then again, the same thing for the verse. We're still in the verse. It's kind of like a four part thing, which isn't that uncommon. But then we switch it up a little bit where we add the sixth chord, 
the three chord to the four chord, then back to one, two, four. But it always goes back to four, so I'm really kind of jamming the tonal center into Lydian, right? Same thing with the relative minor again. And then the last part of the verse is just a two, three, four. Okay, so I've used pretty much every chord available to me as far as playing diatonically, you know, within the rules of that scale that we illustrated earlier. But uh, I still have not hit one yet. And the one that I haven't hit yet is the five chord, okay? The five chord is where like a dominant seven chord would exist, in this case, B, B dominant seven. The reason being is because it's hard enough to kind of like use something traditional and stay away from just making it major or minor, like we've already kind of talked about why I'm kind of like, you know, I'm on that E chord, but I'm not on it for long. And as soon as I do, I hit back to where I want to go, to that Lydian sound, right? As soon as you start introducing dominant seven chords, that is really definitely driving the song in a certain direction. In fact, that's kind of the sole purpose of dominant seven chords a lot of times, is to drive it back to the home chord. And this song is this, the same thing. We do the same thing in this song, right? Halfway, I guess maybe, I don't know, a little over halfway of the song. I go to the B7, but I'm kind of doing it as a way, and I, you know, I thought about this, you know, thoughtfully songwriter style, as far as like, all right, the, the main part, the whole reason I even wrote this song was when it gets to the E major. Again, if you read the lyrics, that's like a whole other thing. But uh, yeah, if you're interested and you get to the lyrics, the whole reason I started writing the song is because of what happens on the part where I start with E major after that B7. So I think of uh, this dominant seven chord, which we're gonna get to in a second, as a way to ultimately go home where maybe like, you know, the, the origin of the entire thing started anyways, which is always gonna be major. The origin of pretty much all Western music is the major scale. And again, we're using just the notes from the major scale, but heavy on the four, makes it Lydian. Experiment with other things, it doesn't have to be the four. You might like a mode that is not major or minor. Check out those other great chords. Two chords, great. Three chords, pretty cool. Stick on that five chord if you're bluesy. If you just wanna rock the seven chord, I'm not gonna judge you, but you might wanna, you know, get that checked out. Uh, anyways, so uh, when we go into the E major part, it's just going to be descending through the scale, and the precursor to that is going to be that dominant 7 chord. So basically where that comes from is we have uh, the end of that verse, right? F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, major 7. B is always going to take us. there okay which is really just going backwards through the scale so once we get to this B after that that five is almost always gonna lead you to a one I'm taking the seventh chord style all the way down the one chord the seven chord the six chord to the five chord again to four okay and because I've been hammering home this Lydian idea it seems very kind of appropriate that this descending run ends on the four chord, right? Which is also a transition back to the verse. Which again, everything is gonna be the same thing, right? The one chord to the two chord, and then just post up on that four chord, right? Then if you wanna switch it up, we can go to the six chord, to the three chord, back to the four chord, then one chord, two chord, four chord. And then maybe kind of editing it and setting up for the finale. Relative minor, Lydian, two, three, four. Where are we going to end the song? Is that really going to have resolution on that four? We can go home. And then a little trick, a little trick of the trade. This is the first time we really technically go uh, non-diatonic here. I'm going to E major, a higher voicing of E major seven, rooted on the seventh fret here. Move it one fret higher, and then back, okay? So this chord is not in the key at all, not even close. I mean, I guess it's close, it's a semitone away. E, go to F, then back to E. There it is, right? So I think the point is, you know, it's not technically just 
an excuse for me to try to promote this new song with a fancy lesson about it, or promote the very reasonably priced masterclass at the same time, and just another reason to see myself on camera. It is all those things, but it is a great way for maybe you to experiment with different modes and kind of use stuff to try to make it sound a little bit different. And even like sounding different isn't the point. It's just trying to find your style because I get questions from people that's like, ah, you know, I, I start songs and I don't finish them. I lose my excitement for it. A lot of the time is like, it's fun to just start anything musically, you know, if you have an idea. But so often it can kind of, you know, once you go through the grind of trying to finish something, it's like, well, this doesn't really sound like me. This just sounds like other stuff. And I think really finding your voice on a guitar is super important. And I think a lot of that really has to do with kind of using modes to your advantage and finding out which modes you like, which ones work for you, etc. Again, you know, I've always liked that Lydian mode before I even knew what the Lydian mode was. And uh, kind of thinking about it in this way, I, I feel has made me a more prolific songwriter, just be able to finish stuff because I get excited about maybe kind of being like, all right, I know there's gonna be an E major in here somewhere. How am I gonna get there? All right, well, I can finally maybe use that thing halfway through the song as like, all right, B7, here's your time to shine for one bar to get me to this little descending run, right? So yeah, thanks for uh, checking it out. If you have any questions or comments, hit me up in the comment section, Instagram, Twitter, or the website. And then uh, feel free to watch the song that's coming up right now. And if you don't want to watch it, maybe just mute it and open up another tab to help me get that precious YouTube watch time. Thanks a lot. I was her drug, she was my project and Soft around the edges for an attic She'd spill a purse and I would run to clean the mats As she stood with idle hands inside the pockets of her dress All she ever wanted was more than she could say So she took her medication and slept her youth away I was beside her for the worst of it Cold sweats in the night and family turbulence She said she needed love, but first I tried to be her friend Still I always found myself in bed with her again The most she ever wanted was a place I couldn't meet Still I hesitate to wash her from my sheet Hairpins begin to spin my head around the other way I find them to this day as if to say there's something more to put away I was her drum but I'm the addict I need to play the hero for a sidekick Never asked for help, but still I forced it in my way And looked down from the high road, blew a kiss and waved All she ever needed was a little room to breathe The most I ever gave her was a chance to be like me